It was late July in Texas. Man, it's hot. It's like Africa hot. Tarzan couldn't take this kind of hot. I had to get out herping. So I took stock of my meager provisions. 400 pesos. My choice was clear. Mexico. We only had four days, so we took to the air. As we gazed out the window, the frack-scarred plains of southern Texas gradually gave way to the wrinkles of the Sierra Madre Oriental. We touched down, rented our car, and headed out to adventure. Nothing says you've arrived in Mexico like a couple of beers in the shadows of a Pemex station. Our palates sated, we sent out south towards the mountains as rain, glorious rain, fell on the mountains ahead of us. I suspect herpers are some of the few people who look forward to rain falling on their vacations. Maybe we're just weird that way. Eventually, we turned off the quota for a road that might be a little more conducive to some herping. The road rose up through some scrubby desert into some pretty Madrean oak woodlands. We stopped here and flipped a few rocks. Unfortunately, the only thing we managed to find was a nice selection of invertebrates, including this vinegaroon. Out of desperation, I even searched a few ant mounds for horn lizards, but to no avail. We headed down out of the hills, admiring the magnificence of the landscape that opened up before us. As the light of day started to wane, we stopped to flip some rocks and fields at the base of the mountains where interesting critters had been found by herpers before us. For our lack of creativity, we were rewarded with the big goose egg. Next morning we got up and headed up towards the mountain range that had called us here. We spent a couple of days herping up in this mountain range and found quite a few herp species. As we made our way along the narrow mountain road, we scanned the roadsides for basking lizards to photograph. It wasn't always easy. Oh. Oh. Damn. God damn it, you piece of shit. Now, now, Michael. Language. We eventually did get a few photos of the stupider individuals. We actually peeled our butts off the car seats to chase a few lizards with less than resounding success. He could be eight feet up by now. Oh, I'm chasing him to you? Oh, I thought you were chasing him to me, okay. Patience did provide us a few sightings.
We stopped along a little creek and flipped a few rocks. Further up the mountain, we stopped to flip in a more mesic area to look for gummy worms. Okay, my photos sucked, so I subbed in an older image, but trust me, they all pretty much look like this. One of the interesting aspects of the salamander's habitat is that it was on a hillside next to a popular campground. This led to these strange white growths behind almost every tree. We were clearly in a prime example of the Sierra Montane turd forest. As we walked back towards the truck one afternoon, we stumbled across this oddly kinked stick in a clearing, the beautiful Mexican gopher snake. A game of let's see who can get bit ensued. Just for the record, the gloves were for rock flipping. I'm not that big of a weenie. Oh, he's biting the tree. Okay, now. <laughs> Come on. Damn. Oh, 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 oh. Crap. Oh, you're going to fish me Oh! <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Come on. Calm down. Have <laughs> 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 you held a big snake? You don't want to get bit by this one? <laughs> That's a little close to the crotch. <laughs> Here, come hold him. I'm going to. <laughs> Quit putting him in my face. I don't know if I got that on video. I sure hope I did. <laughs> bite him, bite him, bite him. Bite now! Oh, bite his nose. That thing's five feet, oh, I... or six. Here, you get a picture? Have him hang. You can see how big he is. Okay, now hold him out as far in front of you as you can. No, no, yeah, have him hang down, though. It's 10 feet? Yeah, now he's easily 10 feet. We annoyed the snake for a while, took a few photos, and sent him along his way. Never bit me once. Well, <laughs> not never tried to bite him. Let's see if we climb up that wall. In the evenings, we usually headed down out of the mountains to do a bit of road hunting. We found a number of Mojave rattlesnakes, dead and alive. Chihuahuan night snakes and Mexican spade feet, spade foots, whatever, and a couple of DORs of our target species, the Tamalipan rock rattlesnake, whose range, by the way, is almost entirely within the state of Nuevo Leon and barely gets into Tamaulipas, but yeah, whatever. One cold and rainy night, we drove back to our base through the mountains, not really expecting to see much since the temperature was in the low 60s, but unfortunately we did find something. A beautiful DOR of the newly resurrected Nuevo Leon king snake. We did look for Leonis up in the mountains by flipping rocks and logs in habitat like this. One member of our party, shown here, claims to have found a Leonis in this pile of loose bark, but let it go before he could get a photo. Sure you did, uh-huh. During a break, I tried to get some of the local residents to pose for video. 
but I think they could smell the chicharrones on my breath and weren't very cooperative. Boo. So I just put the camera on a tripod and backed off. Okay, that didn't go so well. But it wasn't all invisible king snakes, pig abuse, and gummy lizards. We were actually here to help some Mexican research with a project. No, no, not that project. Oh. <laughs> Ready, Chin? Build that wall! Build that wall! <laughs> we knew we could get the Mexicans to help us build the wall, see? One rock at a time. We were after these, the Nueva Leon, whoops, Tomalipan rock rattlesnake. We searched for them under yuccas and rock piles and picked them up for photos. By the way, nice putting it here in the shit. I didn't put it there, I just, I, I, I'm putting it right here. Is that kind of natural habitat right here? <laughs> That's right. Oh yeah, That's it's part of the ecosystem. It draws in the insects, which draws in the scalopers, which draws in... <laughs> That's right. And that's why I turn off the audio track for most of my videos. Here's the pretty little male we found. Well, the snakes here are hardly pretty by Marula standards. Here's what a pretty one looks like. We found these snakes sitting out by clumps of cactus and agaves, usually associated with rock piles. They're quite tough to spot as they sit motionless on the dead leaves and rocks. Once captured, we took data on the snakes and then affixed radio transmitters to them. Unlike a lot of transmitter studies, we weren't surgically implanting the transmitters, just carefully attaching them to the body using a surgical adhesive tape. Since the females were gravid, this less invasive attachment protocol meant we could attach transmitters to them without any risk to their babies. We admired them and let them go back into their rock piles. I should note here that the gloves Craig is wearing are tested as bite-proof-ish. For them, our Craig has years of experience with this species. No one should ever freehandle rattlesnakes. In fact, unless you have a specific reason to handle them for scientific purposes, leave them the hell alone. Eventually, our time in this beautiful mountain range came to a close, so we posed for the mandatory group photo and headed off down the mountain. En route, we admired a huge prairie dog colony that warrants investigations for Massasaugas in the future. Eventually, the quota led us back to Monterey and all of its wonderful traffic, and we headed begrudgingly north to our homes. Another great trip with great friends and great herbs. Who could ask for anything more? Thanks for watching.